Hi everybody, welcome to the History of Berlin and the World War II tour. Now as the name suggests, this is a tour that takes you to see the many important sites of the Second World War in Berlin. And one thing I should mention is that right now we're starting off in a courtyard which is built in the Uven Steel style, which much of Berlin was built around. And there's eight of these that are intertwined and they're known for their tiles and their bricks. And what happens is you see a lot of restaurants, you can see shops and cinemas, and even people live here. Now let's have a look around here. Look at the look at the buildings around here. Look at this up there. <laughs> And then all the way around here, look at this. Hi everybody, welcome to the next part of the World War II tour. Now as we all know during the time of Nazi Germany, many people were taken from their homes that the Nazis thought were in the garbage. It wasn't just Jews, it was handicapped people, Slavs, Gypsies, gay people, and all different kinds. They were taken from their homes and they were sent to concentration camps. Now, what happened was, in order to commemorate this, in the 1990s, they set up a project called the Stumbling Stone, and it was to commemorate those who were taken from homes and sent to concentration camps. Now, if you look down here on the ground here, this is an example of the Stumbling Stone right here. You can see it goes here, and it goes all the way down the street right here. Now, right here, we have a plaque to someone named Dr. Julius Blumenthal, who was born in 1900, and he was taken to Sachsenhausen and killed in 1942. Now, I'm gonna mention, that you'll see a lot of this throughout Berlin, but I thought I would just show you one of them. Now, most importantly, these particular plaques were erected right outside the place where the person was taken from. So obviously that Dr. Julius Blumenthal lived very close to here. Okay, so that's that part of the tour. Talk soon. Hi everybody, here we are at the synagogue in Berlin. Now, I should mention this was built in 1866, and at the time it was one of the largest in Germany. It could house over 3,000 people now. During Kristallnacht, apparently the Nazis burned over 1,400 synagogues over Germany, but this one got lucky because what happened was there was a police officer here, and what he did was he called the fire department and they put out the fire. Now, in 1943, when the British were coming by and bombing Berlin, they bombed this place, unaware there was a synagogue, but of course they were randomly bombing Berlin because they wanted to get the Germans to surrender. Now, after the Second World War, when the communists took over Berlin, obviously they didn't believe in religion and there wasn't much money, so it lay in ruins for many years. But after the reunification of Germany, they started to reinvest in the renovations to make it look like it is today. Now, if you look up there, there's the dome up there. Look up there, way up there, you can see that up there. Okay, so we'll talk soon. Everybody continuing the World War II tour. Now, as you can see right here in the background, this is a building that has a lot of bullet holes. These were caused during the Second World War. You can start here, and you look way down here. Look at these little like bullet holes right here. Now, apparently, these were mostly caused by the Russians because up until when the Russians came in, it was mostly airstrikes by the British and the Americans. But the Russians actually came on land; it was from troops, so they actually did most of this. Okay, now you can see it goes down here. Now look over here. A nice little cobblestone street down here. Now, in the background, right there. There's two orange buildings. The one that does not have the scaffolding is where former Chancellor of Germany Angela Merkel lives. Talk soon. Hi everybody, continuing the tour of World War II in Berlin now. Behind us right here, we have the old museum, which is built in the iconic columns. And in the museum, apparently, you can have a lot of Greek statues you can see. Now, what happened here in June of 1939 was that Hitler had a speech where he rallied the troops and he tried to get the common citizens to support his cause. Now, what happened was on the stairs behind us right there, it was a podium, and Hitler stood on that podium and did his fiery speech. Okay, now this here is called Loose Gardening. Look over here, it starts over here, and then it goes all the way over here. Look at it over here. Way over here, and all the way down here. This whole area was packed with troops and with common citizens. Now, behind us in the background there, there's a castle. Now, back then there was another castle they took pictures of this from, but it was since bombed. But this is a new one that was only recently completed. So you can see this loose garden was pretty full of people back then and talk soon. Hi everybody, welcome to the next part of the World War II tour. Now, here we are at Babel Blast. Now on May the 10th of 1933, this is where 20,000 books were burned. Now, why were they burned? Well, apparently many of them were done by Jewish people or they were done by people that did not jive with the Nazi ideology. Some of them were like Heinrich Heine, Eric Kastner, and Karl Marx, just to name a few. Now, a lot of them actually came from the building of the background, which was the library back then, but is now a university law school. Okay. Now, they have a little memorial to this right here. Right here, it's pretty hard to see, but over here, they actually have some books that was down here, but you can't see with all of the glare during the daytime. You might be able to see something. We'll see if you can see it there. Okay, now, right now, this Babel class is actually used for concerts. You actually see concerts occur here. Now, if you look over here, this is the 
Opera House, the oldest opera house in Berlin right here. And if you look over here, in the background there, we have a hotel, which used to be a bank. So you can see, this is now used for concerts and other outdoor venues. And we'll talk soon. Hi everybody, continuing the tour of the World War II Berlin. Behind us we have the Reichstag now. February 27, 1933, it was burned down and a communist named Marinus van der Lubbe was blamed for it. But many people think it was a scapegoat and actually many people think what happened was the Nazis burned it down in an attempt to make the communist look bad and he was a communist. Now, so what happened as a result of that was that 96 members of the opposition, including communists and social democrats, were sent to concentration camps and during the rest of Nazi Germany was really not used because if there was no opposition, what's the point of using it? Okay, now, during the 1960s, they renovated a bit, but back then, this was West Berlin. As we all know, during that time, the capital of West Germany was Bonn, so they really didn't use it. But when Germany was reunified in the 1990s, they started to renovate it, and now actually it's used as the seat of government, just like the parliament is and the congress is in Canada and U.S. respectively. Okay, so, now, if you look over here, you can see this is where it is over here. We have some government building here that show the transparency of the government. And way over here, you can see the chancery right there. And apparently back there was where the Nazis had their building where they did their governing, if you want to, as a container. It was somewhere back there. You can't even see it, but it was somewhere in that direction. Okay? Talk soon. Hi, everybody. Continuing the tour of the World War II of Berlin. Now, behind us, we have the memorial to the Sinti and Roma and other nomads that were killed during the Nazi regime, and there were about half a million of them. Now, you can see triangle there, which was a symbol that they wear right here, as to show that they were travelers, the same way that the Jews had to wear a uh, Star of David and so on and so forth. Now, if you look over here, the other history of what happened right here, and all the nomads that were sent to the concentration camps. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the next part of the World War II tour. Now, here we have behind us the Brandenburg Gate, which is a very important symbol of unity and reunification of Germany. Now, it was built in 1791 as an entrance to the city. Apparently, this was the edge of the city back then. It was much smaller than this right now. And apparently, on the other side, rather, maybe 100 years past it, there was a forest, which was hunting ground for the king. And that's why they call it Tiergarten, the Garden of Animals. Okay, now, apparently back then, there were also places like Charlottenburg and other smaller cities, which were amalgamated together in 1924 in the city of Berlin, which then was 1.9 million people. Now, if you look up there, the four horses and the chariot and the goddess of victory. Okay, so that's what that represents. Now, let me actually mention, when Adolf Hitler was appointed chancellor on January 30, 1933, to celebrate the Nazis actually marched through there. So that's what this has to do with the World War II tour. Okay, talk soon. Hi everybody, continuing the tour of the World War II history of well, Berlin. Now here we have the Holocaust Memorial to the six million Jews that were killed during the Holocaust. Now, it was designed by Peter Eisenman, who was an American architect, and apparently there are 2,711 slabs. Now if you look over there, this is what it starts over here. Look over there. Okay. And then it goes way down there. Now you can see how far down it goes over there. Now in a minute, we're going to go inside and show what it looks like inside. Hi everybody, continuing the tour of the World War II Berlin. Now here we are actually inside the Holocaust Memorial. Now when Peter Eisenman designed this, his whole idea was to say, interpret in any which way you want to. So you may think of it as say a prison, or you might think of it as being like a concentration camp or even a cemetery. Okay, so I'll look behind me here, this is what you see here. Okay. Okay, now maybe have a look down here. Look how it goes down there. And then look down here. Okay, so I'm going to let you be the judge of what you think. Hi everybody, continuing the tour of World War II in Berlin. Now behind us we have what is just a parking lot. What's so exciting about this parking lot? Very simple. It's apparently back on April 30th, 1945, this was a bunker where German Chancellor Adolf Hitler committed suicide along with his new bride, Eva Braun. Now, here's what happened. Back then, the ceiling of the bunker was seven meters thick. They tried to bomb it several times, but it was able to stand the bombing. And so, after he committed suicide, Karl Dönitz briefly succeeded as a leader, and then on May 7th, he signed the armistice, which was unconditional surrender on Germany's part, and as we all know, May the 8th, 1945, was considered VE Victory in Europe Day. Now, 
Apparently in the 1980s, the last remnants of this bunker were moved, and that's what happened when they gentrified this area, built a lot of new buildings here, and then eventually just put a parking lot there. And what happened was apparently there's still some passageways left underneath, but they're all sealed off, so we can't get down there. I can see it's kind of over here. And then it goes sort of over in this direction here. We don't know exactly how far it goes, but roughly over here is where it went. Now, interestingly enough, that happened on April 30th, 1945. Now, two other unfortunate events happened on April 30th. April 30th, 1993 was when a German actually stabbed Monica Sellis, the tennis player. And for those of us who live in Alberta, April 30th, 1986 was when Steve Smith scored the goal on his own net, which derailed the Edmonton Orange Dynasty. So I guess April 30th does not have a lot of good history on it. Talk soon. Hi everybody, continuing the tour of World War II in Berlin. Now here I'm standing at a spot that looks not too exciting, but apparently right here, right after Hitler committed suicide, there was a ditch here, and apparently his body was burnt and left right here. Now, apparently what happened was he requested that his body be burnt after he committed suicide because he didn't want his body to be dragged out and kicked the way Mussolini's body was. So that's what happened. They say that it happened somewhere in this area here, either right here or somewhere over here. Roughly in this area here was the ditch for his body and Eva Braun's body for burning. However, to continue the tour of World War II in Berlin, now behind us we have the building that was the headquarters of the Luftwaffe, which was headed by Malcolm Goering. Now, the Luftwaffe was responsible for planning all the airstrikes across Europe. Okay, so now we'll head to the next stop shortly. Hi everybody, this is the last stop on the World War II history of Berlin. This is the headquarters of the Gestapo and the SS. Now, as you can see, this area here is all just rubble, but you can see it was all the way over here. It was all the way over here. This was all buildings, the headquarters of the Gestapo and the SS. Now, if you look over here, that's a museum that shows you the history of the Nazi Germany right there. You can get all the information you want there. You can spend a lot of time there burning if you want to. Okay, now, if you go down here, if you look at this area, this also was part of the headquarters. Now this area here used to be a school on a hotel, but when the Nazis took it over, they used it as a torture chamber. So if you came this way, you either didn't go home because you were tortured to death, or you were sent to the concentration camps. Now if you can see, this topography of terror goes all the way down there. Look down there, you can see these are just walls in the remembrance right now. A bit here, but you can see how far down goes there. Okay, so that concludes the World War II history of Berlin. Come check it out.